Okay, guys, so, yes? What? Oh, oh no, no. Yeah. Okay, so this time we're going to be doing um, your inventory method is perpetual and moving average. So, what happened on May 5th? We purchased. We purchased 1,000 units. Okay, at how much? At $3 on account. And it's $100 freight. At Mm -hmm. So, here we are, May 5th, and it goes under purchases. Good, so 1,000 items at $3, and freight was 100 So, what is going to be my total purchases? 3100 Okay, that's my, that's my total total, so... My purchases is going to be three thousand. My total cost is going to be yeah, and my total cost is going to be thirty one hundred. No worries. So in this case, what is my average cost per item as of right now? Three dollars. Three dollars and ten cents. Good. Now, I am still going to move it along over into inventory. So, I mean, that concept's going to stay the same. There you go. So, that concept's going to stay the same. So, I'm going to move it over. So, right now, I have a total of 1,000 items. It's going to be 4310. And it's still going to be costing me this much amount. Now... When we move on and go forth on this part, this is where I'm going to start at doing my average cost per item. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and move um, forward. So here on May seventh, on May seventh, what happened? Yes, we did. Sorry about that. I have to add her in class. Okay. So we sold 550 items, units at $10 each with cash. So... We sold 550 items on May 7th. So 550. What number are we going to be using? Or what's our what's going to cost us to sell each item? Three dollars and ten cents. Three dollars and ten cents, right here. And then now what? What's my? Five is your total cost. Seventeen oh five. Good. And subtract five fifty from your purchases. Oh, wrong number. I don't know where one fifty came from. Okay. Thirteen oh five from your cost. Change a thousand to four fifty. No. Okay. One thousand to four fifty. What? Where did you get four fifty? For the inventory on hand. Okay. No, because we're doing average cost now. Um, you can do that. If that's the easy way out. But again, remember, 
every time we sell something, it may change our average cost per item. You want to do the cost item first. Okay. But in this case, you're right. It's actually going to still be $3.10. But um, I just want to make sure that we keep that flowing, that understanding that every time you sell something, you still have to recalculate it. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'll go ahead and calculate it here. And yes, I still get $3.10. Now this is what I do. Since we're moving this along, I just go ahead and just move it along with, with me. So I have, let me see, I have 450 um, costing me, uh, was it 13.95? And then I just calculate my average cost right here. And what I do is I take the number, this cell up here, and I eliminate it. It's gone. I don't need it anymore. I don't care for it. So I'm going to go ahead and blank it out. And I'm just going to move right along. All right. All right. So what happened next? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, uh, this was on May 10. Under purchases, we purchased eight fifty at three dollars and twenty five cents. Oh, no, I think I just entered it right when you completed it. Perfect. Right? Now what do we do? What did we just do? We need to add the quantity. Yes. Yes, so now we have a total of 1300 Okay, so here we're going to add the totals together to get $4,232.50. Okay. And well, now what is my average cost here? 3.25576.23. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and transfer it across. So in this case, probably I have 1300 Right? And... I know that my total cost is this, so I'm going to recalculate my average cost here. All right, and we know that this is the long number. And now that we've calculated that, we can go ahead and eliminate this part or get rid of it, whatever you want to do. All right. So we're moving everything along and we're just getting rid of whatever is going on and just recalculating, starting anew. That way you don't have to scroll all the way up to the bot at the top again to recalculate it. It's going to be there and your calculations is going to be there as well. Okay. So what happened next? Sold 600 on May 15th. We sold 360 on May 12th. Perfect. We sold 360 on 360, 360 on May 12th. May 12th. We sold 360. All right. What is my, what is my cost here? The 
So here I calculated it. Did it, can everyone agree with me? Is this 117208? So then we're going to subtract, and we should now get 940 left. Oh, sorry, excuse me. Same thing here. We're going to subtract this, and we get 3. Now we have, we should have 30, 60, 42 left, all right? And then now we're gonna recalculate our U average cost per item, and what do I get here? Okay, good. So it stayed the same. So in this case, um, now we have a total of 940. And we have a total of 30, 60, 42. So now my new average cost per item, right? As you guys can see, this is, this is also where you could just, instead of doing the middle part, you could just go straight into this side. And I will show you that tomorrow. So here, I'm going to eliminate this section right here because I don't have it anymore. Okay. Now what happened next? You sold 600 items. Mm-hmm. We sold 600 items at $10 each on May 15. So here, May 15, Ooh, too many numbers. May 15, we sold 600 at what cost? 3.25 Calculate those two together. Nineteen thirty-five, thirty-five. What? Wait, nineteen thirty-five, forty. Nineteen thirty-five, thirty-five. 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 Nineteen thirty-
Then I'm gonna go ahead and carry it across. So now I know I have a total of 340 items left and it's gonna cost me 1106. And my average cost here is going to stay the same. All right, and I'm just gonna make sure I know that this is a large number. Okay, so then I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to eliminate it. So instead of color coding it, I'm just wiping it all out. It's the same concept, but instead of just leaving it there or trying to change it in the inventory on hand, I'm not gonna bother that. I'm not gonna bother changing the information. I'm just going to just move it along, move it across. So there you go. All right. What happened next on May 20th? So we purchased 300 units. Mm -hmm. At three dollars and fifty cents. So, on May twentieth, we got an extra three hundred at three fifty. And you said freight was twenty dollars, giving me a grand total of oh, oh, we're not doing average costs. I mean, we're not doing cost per items. Mm -hmm. We're adding them together, and then we're adding with our 1070, good, and we should get 2176.96. Now, what is my average, my new average cost per item? Three point four zero six two oh what one five good zero one five zero two four as many numbers as you want to display it's it's your it's your paper um, but in this case yes so. I just want to make sure that you know that that's a long number. Okay, so now we don't have 340 anymore. We have 640, and it's going to cost me a total of the 2176. And taking the average here is going to give me that long number over there. So this is just to make sure that we're checking to do our things correctly. And then we're going to come up here. I'm not going to change it. I'm just going to eliminate it. Boom. So now you erase it. If you erase it, everything on this side is going to get messed up because we self-referenced. So we just want to hide it. Yes. So if you do plan on just keeping it all in one area and you're just changing it over and over again, Make sure that if you were to do the cell reference, you're going to have to do it either, either if you do the calculations in the middle, you're going to have to take your cell references here. Or you're going to have to just type in the formula of your, um, your two costs and place it here. So that's why I don't, um, I don't, mess with this part 
especially during average costing, okay, or moving average, um, just because this is where you delete or eliminate anything, it will affect this because I sell reference. I don't, I don't type in my numbers. I actually sell reference, okay? Caitlin? Yes. Can you show me on um, your cost per item for the stock for needed, the 640? How, what's your formula? Because on my calculator and Excel, I'm not getting that last two four on mine. I just, this, this one right here? It's it's going to take it's going to be the twenty one seven six ninety six, and I'm going to divide that by my six forty. That is so weird. My calculator and my Excel spreadsheet are both saying three point four zero one five zero 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 zero. And then I did it on my calculator and it did the same thing. 3.4015. It didn't give me anything after that. Oh, for your Excel, that's very strange. Because, yeah. like. And I have the same exact formula as you. Mm. Uh, some calculators, they have the decimal number of decimal point adjustment. Just try with that. Ooh, I don't know because that can affect that can that that can also affect because it's a rounded number. If it's zero, if it's giving you zero 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 zero. And you're doing this on a regular calculator, correct? Like a Casio? Yeah, yeah. and Excel too. But is your, two, like, is your two, your um, your actual total cost is 2176.96? Is there anything after the 96 on that one? No, because these are all, these are all rounded numbers. Okay. Oh, let me see. Let me, wait, 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 before I say anything. I think it should be all rounded numbers. Whoa. They're supposed to be rounded numbers because we entered it in here as a rounded number. Yeah, you're right. These are supposed to be rounded numbers. Let me. Oh, I see. Okay, I know why now. It's because I didn't round these numbers. So these numbers are decimal points. So every time I'm showing on mine, mine is the, like, I didn't calculate it as a rounded number. It's going to be considered, uh, what do you call it? It's um, an ongoing link, long number, so I know why. So every time we calculate this number, if you do not round it, then that's where it's gonna. That's where you're gonna get that extra number here. So let me. Um, let me go ahead and fix these. Oh. Okay, so here for 310, this is a solid number. This number here, because there's decimals after it, if you're right, I did not round this number. I actually just left it, the calculations in there. But if I were to go equal round, and I do that formula again, comma 2, right? See, now that I have this, it should have changed this number here. No. 
now. I, okay, so uh, where did you get 37208? My numbers change at 3, like everything was good up until this 340, where we subtract the 600 and then do 340. Subtract the 600 and do 340. Okay. Hold on, let me, let me go there. So 360, now we have 940. And then subtract the 600, then 340. So then you'd get... eleven oh six ninety six on the 340, right? 1106... Right, then we added our 600, right? Is this us? No, we're subtracting 600. At what number? That was 1953.46. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the equal round. So we get our number rounded. And then multiply this times this, comma, 2. All right, now I get the 1953.46. Mm -hmm, it's the same, just now we have this number instead. Yeah. There you go. I got now I got the three dot three dollars and forty cents. Okay. So what you gotta do is because these numbers here, because on my Excel, I don't round my numbers. So um so Julie, how did you cell reference yours for this part? Or did you type it in? I just uh -huh. used the formula for the round. Oh, okay. So, okay, that's why. Okay, so you used that one. I didn't, I didn't do my round. I just, I just hid all my numbers. Yeah. Okay. We just it the same way we did yesterday. Okay. Okay, so, yeah. So, if you do that or if, however you do it, just make sure that you are constant, consistent with the method that you do. So, in this case, um, we're just rounding our numbers here because this is what's going to go into our inventory um, our journal okay so you can do it or you can just look it over here but um i mean as far as the numbers they did not change super dramatically like we still got the same answers here and there just the average cost was a little different okay um Okay, all right. So okay, let's let's just continue, and when if we need to seek for further more, then we'll just continue from there. Okay, so what happened on May twenty second? Sold four hundred and fifty units. We sold 450 units. So on May 22nd, we sold 450 units at this number here. And since because I've already, I've already have the, um, I, I went back and calculated it all with equal round. That means I need to be consistent. So I'm going to go ahead and do my equal round. And I'm going to do this times this, comma, 2. Okay, did everyone also get 15, 30, 68? Was 
Okay. Oops. So here, we're going to eliminate 40, um, 450. And what do we get? 190. And then now that we have our new cost here, we're going to subtract this. So what is our new cost here? Sixty four six five four. Oh my gosh, I can't talk. Six hundred and forty six dollars and twenty eight cents. All right, and now what is my average cost here? Three point four zero. Okay. And then I'm just going to bring it across. So here, 190, right? You know it's going to cost you six six $646. So my new average cost per item is going to be this. All right, and we know, I just want to indicate here that we know it's a long number. Okay. And then we're going to eliminate this batch. Right. What happened next? Fifty. Perfect. So six fifty at three seventy five. So May 25th, we purchased um, $6.50 at $3.75 each. And freight was $50. So here, how much was this? Good. And then... Okay, we only have a few left, so boom. Okay, so there I formatted this again. So we're now at this much. So now let's go ahead and calculate our total. So how much do we actually have now? Eight forty. Mm hmm. And then what's our new total total cost? Good. Good. All right. And then let's see, it's at last. Lastly, what happened on May 27? Oh, we sold like 740 units. Mm -hmm. We sold 740 units. And just to make sure that we have this in, um, information on hand, on May 31st, how many items should we have left in our inventory? 
100. So we're getting rid of 740. So let's go ahead and place it here. So on May 27, we sold 740 items. All right, costing me at what? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to do equal round again. Comma two. All right. Twenty seven, sixty, seventy one. We're going to eliminate this because we sold it. So, 840 minus 740, we get 100. So, we reached our end goal. Now, let's see what our total costs were. That um, number is. And what is my average cost per item here? And we're going to expand it just so you know that number exists. And then we're going to transfer the information over. And I'm going to expand that so we know that this is a big number. And I'm going to eliminate this. All right. Any questions in regards to moving average? So pretty straightforward. This is what, how I like to do it. You just simply just move across the board. Don't have to go back up or down anything like that. I move across the board, I move across the board, I move across the board. Because at the end of the day, what I'm using is I'm using the cell reference in this column right here. This column right here is where I'm making my calculations here. So if I can eliminate anything in here, then I have to take an additional extra step to calculate it, this number right here. So in this case, I'm just being, it's not being lazy, I'm just taking a shortcut. And instead of eliminating, I'm just blacking them out, okay? Wiping them all out. Um, but if I were to unreveal it, I can actually see my trend of how my average cost per item actually shifted. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay. For the example here, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So we started with 310, 310, and then we made it up to 325, then 325. And then slowly we made our way up to 340, right? And then once we made it 340, we jumped from 40 to a whole 30 cents to 370. Then that was pretty much it. Okay. So it's really cool when you get to keep your numbers in here because you get to see the record of how many items you've purchased and how many were eliminated. But at the same time, you get to see how the average cost actually changes um, after every single transaction that you've completed. So that's just a little cool thing there. I don't expect you to do that. Of course, you could do however it makes you happy. All right, whatever makes it sense to you. But for this case, because like I said, I am, the, I am a fond user of cell references. So I decided to cell reference everything I've calculated in the middle of here, and instead of getting rid of it because it will affect this transaction, I will leave it there. Okay. Now, if you if you like if you like the, the the concept of doing the work in the middle, obviously you could just take it from here as well. That's not a problem either. But if you're just a fond user of not having this, again, you can calculate this without.
decluttering the middle space. And that's what we're going to look into tomorrow. We're going to not calculate in the middle, and we're just going to go put it straight into our inventory on hand. All right, show you because it's getting easier and easier to understand now. You don't need to physically see the transactions or physically record you subtracting this transaction. You can just eliminate it um, right away. So that's what tomorrow is going to be. So I'm expecting tomorrow to be very short because now I don't need to do this extra step of elimination. I can just go right into my inventory on hand. Okay. Any questions in regards to this? Okay, so let's go ahead and finish up the second one. All right, for our average cost. And because I used the equal round here, I'm just going to also continue doing it on the other side. Okay, so here is my table. Just give me one second. All right. And what happened next? You have a <laughs> okay, now this is assuming mm -hmm, we this is assuming that we are continuing from the previous problem. So here we know that we ended with a hundred items. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at my um information on this side and I am going to see if this will work. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to transfer it over into my new um, worksheet here. No, no, it don't work. No, there you go. Oh, nope, it didn't work. Okay, so I got to go back. So I know that I have a hundred and I know that this right here is 373. Okay, then there you go. Here's my average cost per item. I'm going to double confirm that. So $3.73.07. Good. All right. There I'm at. So let's go ahead and what happened next. Purchase 800 units at $4 on account and freight cost is $100. Okay, so, wait, what was that? $850? No. Yes, we purchased 800 at $4. At $4. Okay, so, and this was June 5th. And so we purchased 800 at $4 each, and freight was 100 So let me go ahead and, what is my total calculations here? What's my total purchase price? $32.50. Thirty-two hundred, and with the additional freight cost, thirty-two hundred. Good, and my oh oh. Yeah, I think you're I'm calculating again the same thing. So now that we have this information, now what you can do too here is you can also bring that forth over here. It's up to you, but in this case, we know that we need to add um, our hundred. So I'm going to calculate, how do I want to do this? Since it's already up here in the front, I know this is for purchases only, but I'm going to do it for the sake of this um, inventory problem. So 100, right? And we know that it was worth the 373. And we're going to add them together. And what is my new average cost per item? This 
divided by this for Okay. So now I got that new number. I'm going to transfer it over. All right, and I'm going to go ahead and eliminate this right here. Okay, so then what happened next? We sold 350 units at $10.50. Okay, well, what was the date on that? June 7. Six. Seven, we sold three fifty at this number here. And we do the formula again, equal round. Comma two. Forty two. Okay. Then we're going to eliminate this number. So what's my new total here? Oh, yes, by 50. Two point oh eight one one eight one eight for how many numbers? Oh, mm. I guess eight, two, two, eight, one, eight, two, eight, eight. <laughs> um, lots of ones and lots of eight. So in this case, we stop. In this case, it changed our average cost per item by ten thousandth of a penny. Yeah, okay, well, give me like one second. Okay. Transfer the information over. All right, and we know that these numbers are probably being super big. There you go. And then we're going to eliminate this. Okay. Now, what happened next? We purchased 750 items at 425. We purchased 750 items at $4.25. All right, and freight is 75. So, what was the date on that? Was it June 12, 10? June 10. We purchased on June 10. Too many numbers. June 10. How many items did we purchase? Oh my gosh, I'm getting brain fart right now. 
seven fifty. Okay, at four dollars and twenty five cents, and freight is seventy five cents. Okay, so we are here for seven fifty at four dollars and twenty five cents each. And oh, hold up! I made a typo. I made a typo. There you go. So did it? Did you guys get thirty one eighty seven fifty? That should be right. And then plus seventy five dollars. Okay. And then now what? And the 750 together. Yep. Okay, so add those up together. And then move across together. And then get your cost per item. I got 4.23626692. 36269. Good. All right, and then we're going to transfer this information across. All right, and then I'm going to eliminate this section here. Okay, almost done, guys. So then what happened on, Ju on June 12th? We sold 450 units. Yes, we did. So he followed this line here. So 612. We sold 100, uh, four, 450 units okay, at mm -hmm. then we're going to equal around, make our multiplications here, comma 2. And what do we get here? Yes, 1906.32. And what's our new total here? Mm -hmm. And then we're going to subtract our 1906.32. And we get... What? Good. And then lastly, solve our, our for our cost per item. Four point six three two seven five. Okay, so I'm gonna Right, then we're going to transfer this information across. Wait, what the heck happened? This divided by this. There you go. And we can eliminate this number here. Okay. Now, what happened next?
500 units are sold good. So June 15, we're going to go back up here. For June 15, oh, June 15, and we sold 500 units at a total cost of Mm -hmm. Yes, we get three fifty, and then and we get a new total of. Fourteen eighty two six nine, and what is my new average cost per item since we sold something? Okay, and then I'm going to transfer this information right across again. All right, and I'm gonna highlight this, and I'm gonna eliminate it. Oh, eliminate, there you go. Okay, now what happened next? So we're on the 20th of June. We we purchased six hundred units at four dollars and five cents. Good, and our freight is twenty dollars. Yes. Okay, so let's bring it over here. On June twentieth, we purchased six hundred units at four oh five. Give me a total of and then our freight was twenty. Good. And then what do we do here? Good. So now we have a new total of nine fifty. Transfer the information across. All right. Okay, then. It won't let me do it. There you go. Okay. Now, what happened next? We got three more transactions, guys. On 622, we sold 250. We sold 250. On the 22nd of June. Okay, so 22nd of June. We 
we sold 250. At what number? 4.139674. I thought I eliminated this. What in the world? Okay, there you go. Okay, so what did we get here? Yes, okay, and then yes, we are 250, and we are getting 700. And subtract 1034.92. Good. And then four one three nine six seven one. All right, then we're gonna transfer the information across. Why can't I not do it anymore? Okay, all right, I'm just gonna have to do it one at a time. Okay, so now we got 700 is our new batch now, and that is our new total cost per item. Okay, all right. So next, Four dollars and thirty-five cents. So three fifty at four dollars and thirty-five cents each, and my freight was fifty. That makes no sense. How can freight for six hundred be twenty dollars? <laughs> uh, it's okay. It's just an example. So three fifty at four dollars and thirty-five cents, and freight is fifty dollars. Okay. So here, on. June 25th, we purchased 350 at 435. 15 to 250, good. And then we're adding 50. What was that? 1572.50. And then what is my average? Oh, I got to do. I got to add them first. So now I have 1050 at Oh, okay, I thought you were adding them. <laughs> okay. So here, I'm transferring the information over. All right, I'm just gonna, no, no, be consistent. So this number should be that long number. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and eliminate this and this. Okay. Ooh, we're coming up to the last couple ones. So on the June 27, what has happened? Mm-hmm. 
Okay. And lastly, what happened on June 30th? Good. So our goal is to get 500 and we just sold 550. So let's go ahead and look at that. So June 27, we sold 550 at how much? Good. And Two, three, four, one, five, seven. And we're going to eliminate these numbers. So I started with 1050. I sold 550. So I have a total of 500. So yes, we were successful. Okay. Now let's actually calculate the total of these five these 500 items. Okay. What do you get the total here? That's fine. Two, one, two, eight, seven. Good. And the average cost per item. Point two five. Let's expand that. Okay, good. Two point five seven four, and it stops there. We transfer the information across. And we get our ending right here. This is exactly how many items we have left on hand. And any questions in regards to moving average? Like I said, much, much easier. What do you guys think? Oh, yes. Again, we're going to be looking at um, all three um, costing methods tomorrow. Okay. And then you guys have the weekend. And you get, you again, I will say this again. You have your quiz and your journal due. And then the following Monday, we're going to practice doing the same thing, except we're going to be journalizing every single transaction. So... It's going to be very fun because, again, when we move into our fictitious business at the end of the class, well, the last five weeks of class, this is where we're going to be practice, practice doing every single step. And now the reason I'm teaching it you while I'm doing it in class is so that when we get to the fictitious business, you'd be able to be successfully and be comfortable doing it. All right, if you guys don't have any other questions. Uh, Lynn, uh, one question. Yes. Now uh, uh, we, we studied this perpetual and we 